Hello, everyone. I'm glad to be back in Prague, back in GDC, GS, sorry. <coughs> uh, so I wish you have a very nice morning. Uh, I would like to make it even more pleasant with my speech today. The goal of this speech is to search a way how to do planning in video games development, how to predict deadlines, even if there is not enough information. So uh, I've been doing games for some time. I started as a pixel artist and animator, doing some design scripting. Uh, but last 15 years, I'm mostly working just in like planning, management, and this kind of business. Uh, and right now, I am the development director at Bohemia Interactive, where I'm trying to successfully predict deadlines for our games and maybe some other stuff. So what about you? Are there any game developers here in the audience? A good, we have few game developers. Uh, are there any non-game developers? Okay. Uh, and who have done some planning in the past? Hmm, good. And planning for the game development? <laughs> Very good. So, if you have done some planning already, uh, and maybe if you have finished some games, you know um, how to do it. Uh, but, and basically, if you do another game, you can repeat the same thing uh, and go, go on. But if you are going to start with something new, something which you haven't done before, then it starts to be quite difficult. Uh, so, today we are going to talk about planning games which you haven't done before, games which you don't know how to develop, and this is tough. So, this guy, Edison, so uh, I was wondering what kind of development plan he was using when he was like inventing electric bulb or what the Lumiere brothers were using, whether it was uh, agile or waterfall when they were uh, doing the movies. Uh, so, I think uh, right now I would like to say that it's really difficult to plan something which you don't know how to make. Which, like, games, innovative games are amongst these things. So, uh, it's difficult. Uh, unless you have a crystal ball. And because game development is a magical industry, uh, at least for me, uh, we can use crystal ball. So, uh, the basic technique of predicting deadlines in game development is you need to have a crystal ball. Uh, so, let me try. When is Daisy gonna be finished? Hmm. Thir 13th of December 2018. Ah, it's next week. Okay. Uh, so, um, do you have your crystal balls with you? No. Oh, shit. Because, uh, well, uh, in this case, uh, well, actually, there are some other things that can be used. They are uh, not so efficient, but um, we can we can maybe try it. So, um, and since it's about making games, let's do it as a like a, as a role playing. So, imagine that we are a team, a company, small company. I will play the CEO who has money and ideas, and you will be producers. So uh, you are supposed to use our development team, which we've got, and convert my money and my ideas into a game. So uh, your task is to plan and execute the development. So uh, we don't have actually the time to do it properly, like 
you're doing all the writing and everything. So I will just guide you through the process. You pay attention and imagine that you are doing it yourself. Uh, and we will talk about these steps and uh, you will be imagining how you could be doing it. And this is basically the thing what I would like to show you. So as a CEO, I have a pitch for you for a game. So listen up. A friend of mine works in Hollywood and I know from him that uh, they will be releasing a new Rambo movie uh, in a year. So uh, I have this great idea that we will do a project about Rambo because uh, I can get a license for that. Um, so let's just focus on mobile devices. We will use Unity. Uh, that will be some base. You move uh, from the base using helicopter and th there are some various missions. Let's say single player, a multiplayer, cooperative multiplayer. Hmm. Uh, well, it doesn't sound very innovative, right? But uh, imagine that your team has never done such a game before. So for your team, or our team, should I say, it's new territory. Uh, and because the game should be simple to imagine, it will be easier for you to plan it. So how you are going to do it? So first, you will do uh, some kind of high-level plan from top down. Uh, the result of it will be some kind of a roadmap with deadlines. And after this, you will be doing a detailed plan from bottom up, uh, which will basically will help you to validate your roadmap and iterate it. Uh, and on the end, we'll be just very briefly listing some risks that can affect your plan and think about some mitigations, and, and then we will execute the development and we will great, uh, we'll make this great game. So, uh, but before we start, you need something. You know what it is? You need to understand the game we are doing. Like, I gave you this pitch, like, I think it was awesome, but uh, maybe for you doing the planning, uh, you will need something more. So um, you uh, speak to your boss, which is me, you speak to your team, discuss, and you need to find out answers for these questions at the beginning. So after hours and days of brainstorming and discussions, you will end up with something like this. Uh, we are limited uh, with the development till 12 months because the movie is coming out. Uh, we have some team, very skilled developers, we've done many puzzle games before, they are super awesome, our guys, but uh, with this game we are going a little bit further, so we'll hire some more guys. Uh, I have enough money, so don't worry about that. Uh, and maybe more imp most important thing is why we are doing it. Like, when you are doing a game, you your team, everyone should understand the motivation why you are doing this project. What is the reason why you are doing it? What's your motivation? And also how you are gonna measure the success. So for this game, our motivation is we would like to finish a little bit larger game. We've been so far doing small games. We'd like to expand our team. And also, we would like to use this opportunity to release a game which is connected to this blockbuster Hollywood movie, and it's a big chance for us. And um, criteria of success, so obviously, short term that uh, we'll finish the game, and it will be on time with the movie. And long term, we want to grow our company, we want to stabilize our team, and be able to work on more and more ambitious games. So uh, this is really important and I would like to stress it out because sometimes these things are not clear to the development team. Uh, everyone needs to understand it. Everyone needs to believe it because if not, then basically it's much more difficult. And remember, these things can also change over time. So make sure that your team 
knows these things and that you update whenever there is some change. So for example, if my Hollywood friend will cancel the movie and we will need to come up with something else, let the team know. It's useful. So uh, going back to your production job, <clears throat> we need to find out what are the key deliverables of the game. Uh, so again, this is not for you as producers. This is something more for the whole team. So you speak to them, uh, and this is basically, uh, you need to dig out what the game is about. So our little project which will consist of these key deliverables. There are some character movement, shooting, AI, some weapons, missions. I would like to put some story into it. We will need some UI and we will have the multiplayer. So uh, some key deliverables. And now you as a producers, you need to do some prioritization of like what is the most important feature, what is less important. So there is this like little exercise called $100 bucks, uh, 100 dollars um, exercise. And the uh, goal of this exercise is to divide hundred dollars of budget between these features. So uh, you can just do it, right? You divide it, uh, but, mm, and basically you say how, how important each feature is. Uh, but if you end up with something like this, which is pretty lame, uh, it doesn't help you. Uh, you really need to talk to your team and define the priorities and also like possible difficulties much more. So you may end up with something like this where, you know, maybe we will not put so much focus on the story element. Maybe if there is time, we will put a few text there, but it's not going to be the key feature of the game probably. Uh, we should really put some effort into the procedural missions because I think it will be awesome. So, and by thinking this way, it will give you more idea in which areas the team will need to spend their time and their efforts and so on. So for you as producers, this is important to understand this from the very beginning. There might be other things you need to know, like unique selling points, competitive analysis, business models, many more, but for our speech today, for our workshop today, it's not important. So, let's start with the top-down plan. And I have a good news for you. Uh, from what you know, uh, you can just create the top-down plan right now and alone. Because actually, what you want predict deadlines, well actually, you don't need to because start, it's now, end date, I gave it to you, it, it's in 12 months. So this is simple situation. Actually, in most of the cases, the deadline will be given to you either by circumstances, like my friend releasing the Hollywood movie, or the money you've got for your disposal, uh, or there may be some other reasons, but even if you don't have any deadlines, it's always good to aim your development at certain time. You can just pick it and try to make the plan towards this deadline. If you are not working with any deadline, you will never finish this game. So define a deadline. If you have unlimited resources, you can maybe change your minds later, but start with something. So if we look at what uh, our development is gonna look like, I go to Excel and I can create table like this. So basically I have some rows and columns and it basically shows me my 12 months of development. Uh, and now we'll be doing the roadmap, which will give us the idea like how much time we have for each development phase. Uh, you can use your crystal ball or uh, maybe common sense would be enough. 
you can discuss it with your team, whatever. So, uh, and the thing is that you start with the finishing phases. This is the easiest. Releasing di digitally, it's so much simple nowadays. Uh, back in the days when uh, you need to manufacture physical disks, uh, it was taking much more time. Uh, so now what you need to do is you need to find out what are the submission times for your target platform. So ask target uh, the platform owner, which uh, in our case it could be Apple, or you can ask the teams who've been doing this kind of game, so how much time does it take when the game is finished before it comes out. And also depending on the scope you may uh, leave some some space uh, for localizations or if you have multiple platforms you will probably need more time. For example, open world game with cutscenes uh, in eight languages released on three platforms simultaneously, uh, it could easily take six months or even a year, this like uh, finishing phase. So uh, I have the submission and release, this is basically game is finished and someone else is doing something with it. ZBR is the stage where in the morning you came to the office and there are some bugs found uh, and you are able to fix them during the day so there is zero bugs at the evening and there are, someone is still testing it overnight and they will find some more bugs during the night. So this is the phase where it's almost bug free but there is still some bugs. So, that's the finishing phase. We move back to the production phase. It's uh, alpha and beta. Alpha for me it's where you know exactly what you are doing. Uh, you are not trying, you are not searching, you know exactly how to do it and you are just doing it. You have probably the most people in your team at this stage and working, uh, working on assets, working on levels. Uh, for our game, a Rambo game, we will need some levels and assets, uh, so there will be, they will be, uh, we will need some time for that. Uh, maybe for some like procedural games or systemic games, this phase can be maybe smaller proportionally, because more work is done in the beginning. Uh, so alpha, it's when everything is finished, you can play the game from beginning till the end, maybe there are some placeholders and stuff. Uh, and there may be some problems and beta is when you are basically just polishing it, uh, making it better, fixing the problems you can see in the game and so on. So I would put, let's say, this amount of time into our little development and then we will add the remaining starting phases. So this is the time when you and your team is trying to find out what game we are making. So uh, here we are doing uh, maybe a prototype uh, that shows how the game is fun to play, also with the artists and other content creators, we'll be defining the pipelines and workflows and setting technical limits and also some example benchmarks uh, which will basically help us to define how the game is going to be made. And I would like to say that this phase is the most important one. Sometimes it's uh, the most underestimated phase. Some teams, they just keep working uh, in this phase for ages. They change their mind, they change the concept of the game. And as they do this, it's eating up the time that is needed for the alpha stage, for the production phase where they will be doing the game. So if we have such a tight development plan, uh, we really need to be um, very careful about how long we will do our pre-production. So we've got uh, this little roadmap, but what it also means is that we won't have 12 months for making this game. Uh, if we look at it, we will have, let's say, maybe four months of art production, two months of art post-production and finishing. We will have uh, maybe 
two, three months for prototyping all the levels and then four other months to finish all the levels. So, uh, and also prototyping features will take some time, then we will need to finish the features and debug the features. So, don't be fooled by the amount of time you've got for the whole development. For in our case, it's 12 months. The actual time for development is much less. And when you have this, you can basically set up uh, your milestones, which you can give them some headlines, some names, uh, whatever. It's, you can call them like January, February, March, April. You can call them some fancy names. But is it correct? Can you really make this game using this roadmap? What do you think? Well, uh, maybe yes, maybe no. You may have some gut feelings about it, but don't be fooled by feelings. You are producers. It's your duty to know it more precisely. So it's when it comes to bottom-up planning. So it's basically where you start doing some detailed plan of production. Uh, so can we do it right now? Well, maybe not really. That would be too ambitious. We need to do some simpler steps. So let's start. We have our team. So who these people are. Um, we need to think about who we have, who we need to hire. Can we outsource something? So maybe uh, the, who we have, it's, it's clear. We have six people. I said it in the beginning. Uh, they are great guys. Um, and then we need to think about how many more people uh, we will need. So you need to, you can guess this. You can somehow predict, predict, predict this uh, using the crystal ball, for example. Or just, again, use a common sense. Uh, the bad news here is that uh, if you want to hire some people to your team, it will probably take you more time than you, you think it will, because there are not enough people on the market who would be, would be free to uh, join your team. Um, but anyway, this is something that we will not uh, complicate our example here. So. Uh, you will basically have some more people, I said 20, so it could be four programmers, two designers, maybe some three map designers, whatever, environment artists, character artists, maybe we don't need the audio guy because we outsource audio, whatever. So then, next step is you need to find out what your game will consist of. And I'm not talking about key deliverables or pitch or anything, or something like this. I mean list of everything. So you will create backlog of features and assets. You will, not be you will not be able to do it alone. This is something that you will need to do with your team, with your programmers, with your designers, with your artists. And it will be nice bonding exercise. And it will probably last the whole pre-production to get all these lists together. So uh, how does it look? Uh, it can look. Uh, as you like. You may use Excel again, you may put it on a piece of papers, whatever. Uh, so in case of feature backlog, you need all features and gameplay mechanics uh, that you will be using. So you need to have them designed. Designers should give you this. You will list it all. Uh, ideally, programmers would need to prototype it. Uh, and then also reviewed it, the designs and prototypes, and gives you estimation times. When I say feature, I don't mean, uh, I mean, there's going to be feature like character moving forward or character movement. But uh, you will probably need to list all the tasks that are needed for uh, making this happen. So uh, programmers should give you that. But if they are not, uh, you can use like these task types uh, that are probably valid for each feature. 
starts with like the actual design uh, from designers, then uh, someone needs to think about how it could be programmed, uh, maybe have, a have some time to do a prototype, then do some basic implementation, then have some time for iterating it and debugging it. So if a programmer will tell you, hmm, I can do this feature in three days, well, he will probably have the prototype if he's fast enough, but to have this feature complete, you will probably need more time. Uh, this is very difficult. And don't be intimidated by, by this. Um, and it will be wrong anyway. Uh, so don't be scared to have some wild guesses. But it's better than nothing. Going, back, going forward uh, to asset production. Assets, uh, what I mean by assets is like art assets, for example. Uh, so <clears throat> you need to uh, first define the pipeline, which is like the way how you work on each asset. So basically what steps the artists and other team members need to take to get them from start to finish. And if your artists haven't, started, uh, haven't done it before, they need to do it now in pre-production, they need to try, they need to go through it. If you have done this type of game before, it may be easier because you know already, but maybe the platform has changed and the technical limitations are different, so most likely at the beginning of every project you will be revising the asset pipeline. And it can look like this for assets, for example. Designers thinking about something like, I, wanna, I, don't, I want a chair in the game, so I may have a reference picture, or just actual chair. Uh, maybe some, will, some artists will do a 3D sketch where we will validate like the height of the chair and all that it fits to the animation. So you say, oh, this is like the size of the chair that we want. Uh, I have a checkpoint mark there. It's super important for your art pipeline or asset pipeline in general to have checkpoints. You need to have these points, these gates, where someone responsible, and you need to define who this responsible person is, will say, it's good enough, we are okay with it, this is the way how it goes. Because then it goes further, like artist is working on high poly model, for example, then again, maybe art director or some lead artist or senior artist will say, ah, high poly model, it's good enough. And some more work is done on the thing. And then maybe, I don't know, testers or someone will say, ah, oh, it's finished. Because if you don't have these gates, if you don't have these checkpoints, it may happen that, you know, artists started doing this high poly model and put like nice textures and then designers comes in and says, ah, oh, actually I don't want this, this chair. I would like, like that chair. And this can basically damage your planning. So as a producer, make sure you have the pipeline. Uh, it's maybe a little bit like difficult for like these free-spirited artists and people to have like such a tight processes, but if you want to plan it and if you want to stay on time and if you want to help them to have time for finishing and polishing their game, it's good to have a um, pipeline. And you must require this for all type of assets. Characters, weapons, vehicles, buildings, whatever. This is important. And uh, also, you also need to know the technical limits for your platforms. Because I've seen some developments where artists started doing some things and after months, They've started to put it together, they put it into the scene, and then they've realized that it doesn't run on their platform. So you need to know what are the technical limits, like how many polygons, what type of shaders, what's the texture size that will fit into memory. So you will need to work with uh, artists, programmers to define this, to be able to say, yeah, this is good enough, we can produce it. Uh, and also, you need to have some um, benchmark which will give you like the visual reference for the quality you are aiming at. Because normally what artists do, artists, you give him a chair, he makes the best chair ever done. You make him make a small rock and he will spend three weeks doing this little rock 
and it will be probably the best rock in the game industry, but actually your game is not about rocks and it will not fit and it's not important, so it's just losing time. So you need to give them, artists, visual references, how detailed things should be and so on. Uh, so uh, this is important for all the artists in the team and also for the outsourcers if you are going to use some. Basically, exactly the same goes for level design. Uh, the only difference is that uh, level design is even more complicated uh, than art production because as you can see, for example, on this like example, there are just more parties involved. You have some level designers having some ideas and maps, then prototyping it, having some terrains, 3D sketches of the terrains, then making a list of assets, and then these assets are go going to be produced, and then these assets are going to be used in the level, and so on, and so on. So basically, levels in kind of game we are now doing, like level-based shooter, will be probably on our critical path in our project plan. So it requires a lot of attention. So really keep these checkpoints really tight uh, and do a proper estimation because this is where your planning can go really wrong. So uh, the same uh, as once you, once you have the pipelines defined, you basically go for the asset backlog, which is exactly what you did with features but you are just listing uh, all the work that needs to be done. So you are listing like all the chairs, tables, rocks, characters, weapons, whatever. And you are also putting some estimation how much time uh, it will take because you've done your benchmarks, you have your pipeline. So you know chair with all these steps will take probably 37 days, whatever, or less or more. and. Uh, you will just list it in this little table. Uh, again, this is really difficult. Your uh, team members will tell you, no, 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 we can't do that because we don't know what kind of levels we will have. We don't know what, uh, we, we need to think about it more and uh, we will give you some information later or let's not plan it now. If you allow that, it's okay. They will be happy experimenting, doing things, but then surely, they will ask for more time and you probably won't have more time or you will tell them oh, we don't have time and they will be cutting things or they will uh, don't have the time for polishing it so you will end up with much, with much worse game so as producers make sure you have these lists and then when you have these lists which will be probably the most difficult uh, part uh, of your work as a producers uh, you will basically first start doing some balancing like uh, of your capacity and of your scope and then you can divide it into milestones and then on the end you can do some detailed plan. So let's talk about the first point, the broad calculation. So how does it work? So we established already that uh, we have some team. So basically we have team, we have time, if we can multiply it, we have amount of like work hours, work days, whatever we have at our disposal. Uh, if you are indie, you can count uh, weekends and nights. Uh, if you are corporation, you don't. But important is that efficiency always is not hundred uh, percent. It's a it's common sense, right? You, People will need to discuss about things, there will be meetings, there will be people sick or whatever. 70% efficiency, if you reach that, like you have estimate, estimations and people are able to hit um, these like dates with 70% uh, efficiency, I would say you have pretty awesome team. I've seen teams which were pretty awesome and they were like between 30 and 50 percent of like what they have estimated based on the benchmarks and everything. So uh, you need to have this in mind. So then you basically start again with Excel which is my favorite tool. Uh, you just put your team members there and you, s you will uh, basically write there how many days I'm 
using days for my calculations, how many days they have available till end of alpha. For me, uh, the target in development is always alpha because this is where we are developing things and after alpha it's just polishing, uh, debugging, we, you can't really schedule that. So how much time do you have for alpha? So you have the roadmap, which we defined already before. You know your guys, maybe artist Tomas can uh, work much harder or artist John is uh, also going to school so he doesn't have so much time. So you know how much time they've got. And then you connect it with uh, your tasks from your feature list or assets list. Uh, if the project is bigger, which it always is, it's easier to uh, divide it, these calculations into like separate sheets per like departments or areas of the projects. So for example, this could be like a UI team that have artist, designer, and programmer uh, focusing on UI. And you have all the lists from your feature, uh, feature list, and you have also some estimation time which is like artist Peter said that front end would take him five days to, to make. So, uh, and then you can see the priority, which is for me as a producer, uh, think to say, ah, we will uh, really need this feature to be in the game. If it's priority two, it's like, it should go there, but yeah, it's not so important. And uh, for purpose of this uh, example, Priority, priority three is that it will be not in the game. So what you do is you do some little formulas, uh, this one, some ifs, like Excel has a lot of formulas for producers to play with. Uh, basically calculate how many men days artist John has estimated for task with priority three. Uh, then I do uh, similar formula, how many um, men days have artist John calculated for uh, task with priority one and two. Uh, and when I have it, I go and start balancing these numbers. This is like a nice uh, result where I have time, available time, which is uh, bigger than the allocated time, so the sum of all the tasks assigned to the people. As to, there is difference that I have even some like uh, spare time to maybe develop some more features or whatever, but most likely you will end up with uh, being uh, negative numbers. So what you need to do is uh, you need to balance, for example, you can say, ah, uh, this meta game task, maybe uh, someone else can do that. Or you can fiddle with the estimation dates, which I don't recommend you. Like, if, artist tell you, if the artist will tell you, oh, this is like five days of work, and you will, hmm, maybe you can do it in three, right? So uh, you should not do it, but maybe if you have like 100 tasks uh, where artists have told you, oh, it's, it will be like 20 days, something, uh, and your calculation doesn't fit, you may basically investigate more what what it really is, maybe break it down into more tasks and see if you can be more precise. And then you can fiddle also with the priorities. It means I can say, ah, this task is maybe not so important for the game, we can leave it out. The game won't be that good, but we will be, will be fitting in our broad estimation. And basically, uh, you are adjusting it and repeating it until it fits. All this exercise, all this work is brutally wrong. But the good thing is that if your scope is brutally wrong, this is the easiest way how to find it out. Because if you would place the task with some dependencies and like uh, put it in some Gantt charts or milestones, it will take you weeks to find out that it's too much and then it will be difficult to uh, cut because once you cut something, it will break the whole Gantt chart. So 
it's always good to start with this like broad estimates versus avail available mendays, the capacity calculations. And it will help you to get into some better scope, which is more suitable for your team and for your time. And once you've got it, which means that you have like more final list of the features and assets, because you've probably cut some already, you can start going back to the milestones. Uh, and you can start doing the planning. So uh, the goal is basically to divide the development into smaller chunks, which can be like understandable and controllable. So we've got some milestones, uh, and actually we've defined them already in our roadmap. So uh, what we are going to do now is basically we'll take these milestones, we will group features and assets uh, under some epic goals, for example, like finishing like this level or b having a benchmark level, whatever. Uh, maybe the milestones, we can divide them into monthly sprints if the milestones are taking more time than mo one month, whatever, it, it's up to you. And then doing some detailed plan, basically saying on Monday, artist John will be doing this and whatever. So you start mapping it like this. So you now see the milestones which you have defined. You see which epic goal will fit into which milestone in which area. And it makes sense. Like in like the releasing milestone, you should not be developing like AI, although it happens sometimes. Um, and then you will end up with uh, like sprints or like the thing, the time which is like ahead of you. And this is where you can do the detailed planning. Uh, I don't recommend you do detailed planning for the whole project because normally what happens is like in, in one month or in two months, the plans are obsolete, so you need to change them. So if you would plan the whole project, it will take you a significant amount of time and in a month it will change, so uh, don't waste your time. But basically, this is uh, how you will create the plan. Uh, and then, or along the way, as you are working on the plans, you are also writing up risks. What are the risks? Basically, th these are things that can endanger your beautifully crafted plan. So, uh, what could these be? It could be like, hiring doesn't go well, we don't hire these people. The artist's skills are not so great as we expected and it takes more time to do this or they are not able to finish it at all, like the characters are too, too difficult for them. Technology could be problems. You know, you can list these things uh, and you can, in your mind, f look like uh, how you can mitigate these risks. Obviously, you won't be able to find mitigations for all risks. For example, if the volcano near Prague will erupt and uh, the whole country will be filled with smoke and lava, how we will finish this game? Oh, maybe this risk should not be on your list because you don't have control over this. Risks, you really put things that uh, you can somehow manage. And once you have this, you basically start making the game. As I said, uh, You've probably already are in the middle of uh, the development because it took you some time to go through all the pipelines and benchmark assets and prototypes. So I'm saying you go to execution, but uh, you are probably in the middle of the development. And then basically as a producer, you are just like checking what's going on um, and seeing like how well it goes. You can update and check like, your capacity calculations on like monthly basis, for example, and you can see what problems have occurred. So there could be many things that could happen, obviously. And you as a producer, you will need to find a way how to deal with it, like working with your CEO, working with your team. Uh, and that's the beauty of game development, that uh, it's always fun to make games and uh, working uh, against these problems that will appear all the time. And basically, at the end, project is made, 
congratulations, you've made your game. So uh, <laughs> basically, if I would like to summarize the core of the project planning, it's that you need to know what's your goal. And if you know the goal, then you can do the plan. You can never do the plan if you don't know the goal. That's like important thing. Uh, and the goal can be very complicated. So plan could be very complicated, but you can break it down. You can break it into chunks. You can do milestones. You can do some like months, weeks, whatever. You can end up in like weeks of plans. And uh, if you can, if you can't plan. Uh, a week or day, you probably should not be a producer. But what I want to say is that uh, if you break things down into components, uh, you should be able to plan it. So going back and summarize it all, so you need to uh, have some project timeline. Uh, and I, as I said, if even if you don't have a deadline, you should come up with something. Then you need to know the capacity of your team. You need to have the backlog. You need to balance the numbers. You need to break the development into smaller chunks that are more understandable with some uh, goals. And then for the milestone which is ahead of you, you do some really detailed plan. And you need to also know the pipelines, the workflow uh, that you will use for creation. And uh, also, I would like to, again, uh, say that the checkpoints that are the gates which verify your progress and says, we are now going back uh, with this feature or with this asset uh, needs to be there. And listing risks. So uh, that's actually it for me. Do you have some questions? Thank you, Jarek. So I'll ask you again if you have some question, please raise your hands and there is a microphone somewhere. It will run directly to you. Did it ever happen in your life that it actually went according to the plan and you met the deadline? Uh, DLCs or uh, data disks, they are the simplest because you have the pipelines and you pro you, most likely you are not doing some uh, difficult features. So these were normally like very spot on, like in terms of planning and executing the plan. Uh, the more difficult, the more innovative, the, new, the more complex the game is, the more difficult the planning is. Uh, Vietcong 2 was like, it was planned for 12 months. We've changed everything, including renderer, AI, multiplayer, physics, new pipelines for arts and animations. Uh, and we slipped just to 18 months, but the game was shit. So uh, it was not a good thing. So uh, the answer is no, but it's better than nothing, you know? <laughs> so basically, you can never do perfect plan for game development, but if you have a plan, it will be better if you don't have a plan. So, <laughs> all right. Thanks for the question. I think it was important information for you, for <laughs> everyone. <laughs> so, uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, I'll be, after lunch, I'll be sitting at the Bohemia booth. Uh, so, if you want to catch up with me, have some more questions or discuss things, you can do it. And I will be leaving uh, the conference at about 3.30. Uh, so there's like a small window for you to meet me if you want, if you have some additional questions. Or you can also reach me uh, on Twitter or uh, email. I'm willing to help you with maybe your production problems or even some other problems. I don't know. Maybe not. Oh, well. <coughs> so thank you very much and enjoy the conference. Yeah,